Hey everyone, in this episode of the Distance Matching Locomotion series, we'll be implementing our next function, the GetCurveTime function, which is completely pivotal to allowing our distance matching system to function in any way. Um, what it does is it essentially takes an input of a curve value from an animation. Let's say we have an animation, a stopping animation, and it has a distance curve. And let's say we need to get, we need to play the frame of the animation where the distance curve is 10. And so we need a way to input a value of 10 and get the corresponding animation time or frame, um, time is what we'll be using, to play that animation back at. And that is what the get curve time function does. We'll be adding it to our plugin in this episode. And on top of that, there are some more edits that need to be made to the animation modifier, so those I've combined into this episode as well. Okay, so before we get started working, getting our new function worked in, I want to um, do something with the animation modifier we did in the last video. We need to make a couple of changes to it. Um, really, actually make a couple of changes to a duplicated one, because this one here that we made are distance curve animation modifier it works great if you want to let's go over to our animations if you want to just see how long the character has traveled and that works when you're going away from a point really well because it lines up perfectly with everything it'll work just fine with a uh, distance matching for starting um, if we add it on to here Uh, that's also a reason we need to fix this. So let's uh, add it on to here to get to avoid that confusingness that I'll explain in a moment, and partially why we need to make an edit. Uh, so we've traveled nowhere so far, and now we've traveled 358 units. If we're starting, we want to remember where we started and track how far we've traveled from it. And this lines up perfectly with that. You can take the actual distance from the point that you've saved in the world and you can use and you can use that to directly drive the animation using the get curve time function we'll be implementing in this video. But it doesn't work with stop animations. And we have the stop animation here because now we're actually we're not at zero, according to the distance from the marker in the world, we might be closer to 360 units away from the stop location. But our curve is saying we're zero units away, essentially. So we don't want, for our stop transitions, we don't want our curve to tell us your, how far you've traveled. We want the curve to tell us how far you need to travel to get to your stopping location and to do that we're going to go into our blueprints and a modifiers and we're just going to rename this at an underscore start we're going to control w to duplicate it and we're going to change underscore start to underscore stop now we can open it up And I'm going to open up the already completed version of this I have in my testing project. And we, the first thing we want to do is we want to flip this around. So we're going from 358 to 0. Um, let's see. So. I'm going to begin by copying this I'm going to plug our same animation and our same root bone name in but I want the frame to be the last frame because we'll need our root bone location at the last frame and we'll also need our root bone location at the first frame for the math that we're going to be doing to work now if I get the difference between the current frame and the 
last frame. And I get the vector length of that value. And just to be extra safe, the absolute value of that value. And if I apply the modifier, what happened? Oh, I'm applying the start modifier. Okay. And if I apply the modifier, we flipped it around. We go from 358 to zero. And you might think, okay, there we go. We have it. Nope. There's one more thing we need to do. And I'll explain that. It has to do with the get curve time function that I found, um, which isn't my own code, I should say, which we'll be implementing in this video. And it will not work if a subsequent frame has a lower value than the frame before it. I believe, or at least that's what I found. So you can't have a line that continues to go down. It has to be going up. And you can take a line that goes down, keep the same, all the same data, and make it go up by taking the highest value and subtracting your current value from the highest value. So if we... I'm getting the difference. So if we get a, another vector minus a vector, and if we subtract the last frame from the uh, the distance now, this is important. This last frame isn't zero, it's the 358. It's the curve we had originally before it's flipped, the distance that we've traveled. So we're subtracting the 358 from the current pose in the frame. We're getting the vector length. Absolute value, just to be safe. And I think If we subtract. Okay, I realize what I forgot. So we want to subtract this from this, right? But before we do that, we want to make sure that we cover all our bases. Specifically, what if the root is, what if the character is starting at a point where, let's say the root is at negative 10x and we need to go to 100x. We want to get a distance. We don't want a curve that goes up from negative 10 to zero and then down or around and going from a negative to a positive. We just want to make sure we get our distance. So we don't want our, and that's what we're doing here. We are getting the difference between the first frame and the last frame, which will give us our complete distance and not just the last frame minus the 10 and not the complete distance, which is what this would be if in that hypothetical scenario. And so with that base covered, we have the complete distance that the character will travel right here. We need to subtract that complete distance from the distance in any given frame. And apply this we're now going from 0 to negative 358 so we're still going so now we've flipped it around and we're going down but we're on a new scale we're on 0 to negative 358 instead of 0 to positive so now we need to do one more thing to stay on that positive scale and that is to get a map range clamped. Our in range A is going to be here and here. Our out range B is going to be here. Connected to this node. And that's going to go into the top connector here. So we're essentially flipping things around. So if I apply the modifier again, we go from negative 358 to zero. So now the get curve time function will work correctly. And all we have to do is take its output and multiply it by negative one. 
Now let's move on to this get curve time function, which is the title of the video after all. So we are going to open up the Visual Studio project file. Our same files as the last video are plugin BP library CPP and our plugin BP library header. And if you follow the link in the description to the Google Drive folder, you'll find both of these files and you can just copy and paste the new versions in. There's our new header. And there's our new C++ file. Not yet. I'm in the wrong file here. I have to paste it in. I have it copied. So now I'm pasting it in. And it's much longer. We have a pretty big function for the get curve time. And now we will save both of these. And once we've made changes to our code, we need to compile and then we need to restart the engine. So if the compile is completed successfully. I'm going to restart the engine and I'll be back with you when the engine is back up again. Save everything too. All right, we are back. We have our get curve time function. And there's one more thing we need to do for our get curve time function. What it essentially does, I'll go real fast to get in here, just to make sure um, you guys are able to follow along. I don't want to make this too confusing because um, I know we're going through a lot pretty fast. So the get curve time function, it is treating the curve as a sort of data lookup table. You input a distance on the curve and you get a time in the animation. And for it to access that time, it, the animation curves need to be compressed a certain way so that during and inside a built project, the function can access them. And so if we go to our run stop left up and run stop right up animations, you see, you'll see this curve compression, this setting called curve compression settings. Click on it, create a new curve compression setting. We're going to name this I actually forgot the compression setting which we need so I'm not going to name it anything I'm going to save it I'm going to go back to content open this up and we need uniform indexable so I'm going to save that and I'm going to say I'm going to name this curve compression uniform index Now I'm going to go into our distance matching folder and I'm going to add a new folder called data and go back to content and I'm going to drag this into data, move it there. And now we need to select our uniform indexable for both of those stopping animations. One more thing on the second animation, um, I added the start curve back on on accident we need to make sure that we are adding our stop curve on like that there we go and so we have our function added we have our animation modifier fully fixed and completed and in the next video we'll get started with the actual animation blueprint i wanted to start on that in this video but with this video already being uh 15 minutes long that is just going to make it much longer it's much better to split these up into two separate videos and so that next video with the animation blueprint it will be up friday all right so there we go we now are finally ready to begin with the animation blueprint in the next episode and things are really going to take off from here i know it's been slow going so far but Hang in there, we're almost there, and things are about to get really exciting. So thank you all for watching. Give the video a like if you enjoyed it, and subscribe and hit the notification bell too, so that you can see and get notified when new episodes of the Distance Matching Locomotion series go up on YouTube. 
Again, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.